praise the Lord. And now I'm going to welcome our guest speaker, evangelist, contestor, Andrew Yuanu. I know him since he was, as he came to Cyprus uh, 10, 12 years ago, and he started the ministry and was invited in our church to preach as a young man. Now he's not young anymore. <laughs> No, no, he's not as young as he was 10 years ago, but he's still a young man of God, full of fire and zeal of the Lord, and just open your spiritual ears and hear what the Spirit of God would say to us today. I mean, Pastor Andrew Anu, welcome. Give them a welcome clap. Thank you. Uh, one, two, ah, it's okay. There's people that are so, so religious, I guess. And when I said, I got the power. It's like, Jesus got the power. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Peter, he was walking with John past this gate, and there was a cripple there. And he walks up to the cripple, and this guy's begging for money. And he says to him, look at me. And he says, silver, listen to his words, Peter's words just finished training with Jesus all right beginning ministry silver and gold I do not have but what I have I give you what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ get up and walk he got something from someone who is it Jesus so what he has I have See, yeah it's not mine as you know I'm the author of it but what I have I give you so it's okay to talk like this so Anyway, just wanted to break some religious box real quick. Um, let me just pray. Thank you so much, God, for this awesome, amazing, precious people that you love so much that are made in your image and your likeness. I thank you that we're on a journey and we're all growing and you don't give up on us. It's we that give up on you or ourselves, but you keep picking us back up. And I just pray anyone watching today or right here today that's been feeling like giving up, to be strengthened, Lord God, and run the race to win the prize, which is you. To know you and the power of your might. In Jesus Christ's name. To let go of every distraction, every de demonic lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Trying to tell them that something's better than you. Lord, that they would just see it for what it is and wake up and run to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know why David was called a man after God's own heart? It's not because he was perfect. If you read about who little David was, who became King David, he's, man, he committed adultery, got someone murdered to take his wife, you know, crazy stuff like that, you know, lying. Um, but the reason why he was a man after God's own heart was because no matter what he did, he ran after God's heart. He didn't run to anybody else. You get it? He openly, without excuses, said, change me. I've done this. No excuses. He didn't say, I've done this because she and my wife and my boss was like, this. that's why I did it. No, no. I've done this. Change me, Lord. And because honest, honesty is humility. Being real with God will cause you to change the most and the quickest. Okay? Being real. No excuses. I used to blame my dad for everything. And there was a thought to blame for him for, for what he did to me. But it was also causing me to stay bound, to stay in the same pit because I kept on making excuses for my character. And what was my excuse? Because my dad... Da, 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 da. Because my dad... Da, 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 da. That's why I'm like this. No, I was like this because I chose to respond like this and become like this. You understand? When you start doing that, watch the freedom that comes. Why? Because now you're being humble. Open books and change me. I'm like this. There's a, a song that they sang. Rid me of myself, because I belong to you. you know, remember that one? Take me to the cross. Okay. Uh, it says, rid me of myself. He does, I want you to understand something. He does want you to rid of yourself, but the self that he wants you to rid is the one that you were never meant to be born to be. He doesn't want to change your personality. He loves you. He loves you to be unique. He doesn't want robots all acting the same, talking the same, having the same personality. It'll be boring as. That's why he made us so different, so colorful, so everything. But you look around the world. He made us like this. But He does want us to, that self that is of the corrupt nature to die. 
That's the bit. Rid me of myself. So be careful of when we keep saying, oh, I don't want my, you know, myself, myself, myself. He does love you, your personality. I have, I have humor. It just flows out of me. But there was an impure humor flowing out of me before Christ. My jokes were dirty, disgusting, perverted. You know, I would think perverted. Everything would come out because that's what the abundance of my heart had. But then he cleaned me up and I still be humorous. Not right now, but it's going to get there in time. But the point was, it, it gets, I, you know, the humor just comes out of me because that's how he made me. I'm not going to try to be like you. Don't try to be like me. But our character needs to be like Christ. You get it? The fruit of the Spirit. This is what we go for. Because if we keep making excuses for the character that's flawed, the wrong, the attitude problems that we have, that are just say, well, it's because you treat me like this and that's why I'm like this. No, him treating you like that is wrong. But how you're being is you. And this will make you free. This is hum humility because it says in the Bible, God resists the what? The proud. And gives grace to the humble. We're not in a perfect world. We're in relationships that are not perfect because everyone, we're trying to get there. Right? So have that mercy for these people, but focus on you becoming like Christ, not changing the other person to become like Christ. You can't do that. Otherwise, they're just going to fake it, guys. There's a lot of fake changing because that's what the person's expecting from them. So they put this act on and it gets tiring trying to put the act on. How long are you going to put the act on for? How are you going to hold it up for? Because you're doing it by your might, by your power, not by the Spirit. The Spirit will do it. All He wants is for you to become irresistible. How? Humility. He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So irresistible... If you want to become irresistible, that's what it is, humility. Amen. Amen. Uh, second thing was another song we said, uh, uh, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I just felt like also saying something about that. Um, it's absolutely true. And I want you to understand something because many times I talk to Christians or when I'm on the street with groups and I hear some of my Christian brothers say some stuff, it's like uh, they didn't get the revelation yet. And it's okay because we're all learning, growing. You know what the difference between us and other religions that claim that their God forgives? Because there is, guys. Islam, you have to earn it, but Islam, fake demonic religion. Uh, Hinduism, fake demonic religion. All the other religions are fake and demonic. They counterfeit from Satan to, count, to take many people to hell. To hurt them from never be able to come to know their Lord that loves them so much. That's why I just call it for what it is, guys. I'm not going to pamper that. I'm not going to respect and honor a religion that belongs to the devil, I love the people that are trapped in it. Very different. But they, many religions have uh, forgiveness. And the difference between us, and if you back before Christ, if you read before Christ came and died on the cross and rose from the dead, if you read in the Old Testament, God was forgiving Israel, forgiving Moses, forgiving different people when they were asking, because they stuffed up many times. And you know that. You've, you've read it, some of you that read the Bible. What was the difference then? Because that's what Muslims tell me all the time. Well, what's the difference between our God forgives as well? Uh, Hinduism, our God forgives as well. The difference is, what can wash away your sins? None of them can wash the stain. Only the blood of Jesus. See the difference? And you have to get this because that's the point. Otherwise they go, what's the difference between yours and ours? Our, our God says He gives us stuff and He does this as well and blah, blah, blah. That's the thing. He washed away. Think of it like this. You, that you were born with a white gown that grows with you as you grow up. Spiritual white gown. Think about it. Now imagine it right now. That you were given a white gown from birth by God. And this white gown represents your holiness. Your uh, uh, no sin that you intentionally did. Okay? So no sin that you intentionally did. That's what it represents. And then as you grow up, and grow up, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 19. sorry, I just got into it. As you're growing up, 28, 30, 40, whatever old you are right now, how much stains do you think? And every time you've sinned, it's represented by someone, so a bit of mud coming from the ground and going like this. Every time you sinned, every time you thought wrong, because you judge the thoughts and knows the thoughts and intentions of your heart. It's represented with stain, 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 stain. You're 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. How much stain do you think are on your gown? Or my gown? By the time you're, you're the age that you are now, how much stains do you think there is? Do you think it's very white anymore? No, yeah? So, 
it, this is what happened. See, God would forgive us. Forgive me, Lord. I forgive you. But the stain couldn't come off. You see the difference? And what happened was the stains had to be cleaned. Somehow the stain had to be cleaned so you be holy. So you are made as He is in His image, His likeness again. And that's what Jesus did. The blood of Jesus washed away our sins. That's why in 1 John it says the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin. Cleanses us, not just forgives us. He was able to clean us from it. Isn't that amazing? That's the difference between what they teach and what we have. No one has this. And they can't because they're fake. Not the people, these demonic religions that came from the demon himself. And we've got to love these people and tell them the truth even if they kill us for it. What would you give in exchange for your soul? We care about our life too much, guys. But if you give your life for my sake and the Gospels, you'll find it. Just look what he says. We're trying to hold on to our life so much. And he says, no, you've got to let it go. And you'll find it. You'll actually find, you'll see who you are. You'll see the calling you have. You'll see me like you've never seen me before, meaning God. You'll see you like you've never seen you before. Why? Because he wants you to see in the mirror. And he says, it's like a man looking at himself in the mirror in the book of James. That's what he talks about when you look at the Bible. When you look at God's word and what he says about himself and about you, that how he made you. You start looking at, oh, this is who I am? How do we know that? Because in the Bible it says, when He comes, we know we shall be like Him. This is not blasphemous. This is reality. And also, about sinning, sinning, sinning. I'll tell you something, guys. Stop identifying yourself. There's a lot of identity stupidity going on in the world. Because when foolishness is running the world, that's what's going on. But when you identify... As oh, I'm just a sinner, I'm just a sinner. What are you going to function as? A sinner. Because as you believe in your heart, so you are. But Jesus said that He crucified sin on the cross and He made us born again. A new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things passed away, all things have become new. You're not a sinner anymore. You might sin, you repent and ask for forgiveness, but now you're a son or daughter of God. You are royalty. Now if you wake up being royalty... Believing that you are royalty, not I'm a sinner, choose which tree you want to be. You're either the good tree that cor cor brings corrupt fruit, it says in the Bible, or I mean the good tree that brings a good fruit, or the bad tree that brings corruption. It's a tree, not the fruit. We keep trying to pluck the fruit off. Let's cut the fruit. Well, that's a bad sin. Let me cut that off. Stop cutting the branches. Kill the tree. He already killed it. You are crucified with Christ. You no longer live. If you start believing this, everything changes because you wake up as the tree that you really are. You are not sinner anymore. You may sin, but you are not you who you are. Not, if your son or daughter, okay? Who has a son or daughter? Alright, cool. If you have a son or daughter, and they did something against what you said, something really stupid, like they went to Lidl and they stole something while you were walking down the aisle, okay? Did they stop in your son? Did they stop in your son? No. Actually, wow, look how God's flowing this around. I'm going to tell you a story in a second. So this is the, what we do to God. It's like we lost our identity. We're like, oh, I sinned. I'm a sinner. No, no. You're still a son who sinned. Stop it. Repent. And walk righteous. Walk holy. Be holy as I'm holy. That's how you function. If we know that's the reality, we would never call our child, you're not my son anymore, you're a sinner. Because remember, when he talked about sonship, children of God, and sin, he was also talking about an identity. That's why many times he says he became sin so we can become the righteousness of God. He didn't say he came to pay for our sins so we can become the righteousness of God. He was also killing an identity. He became the identity we became when we Adam and Eve fell. He became that as the second Adam. And he became what Adam was, so he can undo, so we can become and die for that, so we can have back the identity that we were meant to have. But if you keep identifying with what Adam did, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. You understand? You get it, yeah? I can go crazy preaching just about that, but I'm not. Because it seems like it's just flowing. What? Can you please put the first one, Luke? Chapter 15, verse 11 to 32. Thank you, Demi. 
listen to this. This parable, Jesus says, and he says it to explain how the Father God is because we couldn't understand, we couldn't get it. Every time he was bringing prophets, remember, prophets were coming years after years after year, God will bring prophets to talk to Israel and tell them, listen, stop it, this is the way, this is the way God likes things, don't do this, blah, blah, blah. But they wouldn't understand it, so then he brought his own son, only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And he says this story about the kingdom, about the Father, and how some Christians can be. This is all about Christians, this parable. And how, I'm going to show you both Christians in a second. Jesus says, and then he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger, one of them, what did he have? Please listen to the word right now, okay? Listen to crap every word that's coming. He had how many sons? Were they slaves? What are they? Sons. This man had two sons. Watch how we say the story. And the, the guy, one of them, as many of you know the story, never stops being called a son. Okay? But I'm, we're going to see a little twist in a second. Okay? So check that out first. So it's the father. Are you children of God or are you, what are you? Children of God, yes? So it's about us. And let's be careful which son we're going to be because both of them uh, need help. Like many of us do. And certain man had two sons. And the younger one of them, younger of them, sorry, said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that, that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after the, younger, after the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Or wild living, in another version he says. And later it explains what the wild living was. Prostitutes, getting drunk, and other crazy stuff that doesn't mention. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. He was in need now. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine, pigs, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods, with the food that the swine ate. And no one gave him anything. So you're so hungry, you want to eat the pig food. And some of us want to choose to do life our own way, even though we say we're, we're Christians, and we are. We choose to walk away from eating from our Father's table and what He has to give to us because we think the world has something better to offer. And you end up eating pig food. Because it's going to starve you. That's what Satan's calling you into. Come, come, come. It's beautiful. You're going to enjoy it. At the beginning, sin is very enjoyable. It's very enjoyable to the flesh. But then the pig food comes. And we find out also that he had no shoes on anymore because he became a slave. It steals from you, it takes from you this world because it belongs to Satan, he's the God of this world. It says that in the Bible. I'm throwing scripture, I might not be saying, please come and I'll show you all the scriptures. Just do anything, I'm just saying opinions. I have, so he says, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to it? And, and to spare and I perish with hunger I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him father I have sinned against heaven and before you and I am no longer worthy to be called your son make me like one of your hired servants what was the reason he was going back to begin with was he repented no he was hungry again sometimes we want to run back to God initially then he starts changing but sometimes we want to run back to God for His hand, not for our God. Not for Him, but for what He can give to us. And then we forget about it. Okay, cool, I got what I wanted. Lord, please, Lord, my finances are bad. Give me a job, Lord, give me a job. Here's the job. Oh, I don't want to pray much anymore. I'm busy now. No, I'm going to watch Netflix and YouTube for seven hours. Instagram. Wait, I didn't like that one. 30 minutes later, you're still taking the same one. Wait, the, the sun, the sun is giving me shade here. Let me filter that. Filter. No problem, half an hour on that, one photo. Because everyone has to see my fake life. That's how I, I live. I live like that. Isn't it true? We laugh because we're all in this. In different ways. It might not be this, but something else. We're willing to waste out our life on, let's say, watching a movie with full of 
swearing, murder, this, that, whatever, two hours watching that, no problem, man. Things that are not appropriate in the eyes of God, you wouldn't want Jesus to be sitting in the same room watching that. But we don't have time for to spend with the Lord. Busy, I'm busy, man. My kids, man, like this. Busy. The reality is, busy, man. My kids, Netflix, YouTube, come on, man. Instagram, TikTok, come on, man. Busy, man. There was a guy that said to uh, this woman, she had many kids. I forgot if she said five or what it was. He finishes preaching. She comes to him. He's Daniel Colander. Look him up. Brilliant. Man of God. She comes to him and says to him, you know, you say this about spending time with God, blah, 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 but I've got five kids. I've got to take them to lessons and blah, blah. Now, I know it's tiring, guys, okay? I can't even imagine I've got one kid and I lost weight. He's running so hard. <laughs> it's one kid. Can you imagine five or three or two? <laughs> Someone just told me before, in time for a daughter. I'm like, I don't know about this, man. Maybe give me another five years to recoup, you know, recover from this one. I don't remember what I was saying. What did I start saying? Ah, bravo, five kids. She's busy. Just take them to, you know, stuff, soccer, football, whatever, all that stuff. I don't have time. And he said, listen, if I was to be able to give you one million euro, dollars, US dollars, for one month, okay, but you need to give God one hour of your day just to be with Him. Now, you can be with Him driving, you can be with Him different places, but just to be with Him one hour every day. Could you do it? She goes, for a million dollars? Yep. By the month, I'll give you a million dollars. Can you do that? She goes, yep. She goes, well, that's how much God doesn't mean to you. For a million dollars, she was able to make the one hour. <gasps> Miracle. But when she wasn't going to get the million dollars, God was not special enough to make time for Him. The truth will make us free. I'm not trying to hurt you guys. I'm trying to poke you with a knife. It's called the sword of the spirit. Pew, pew. So you can be like, oh, it hurts, but it's true. Or you can be, oh, I'm offended. <laughs> I've had that happen before. Offended, I'm going home. Stay the same. <laughs> you're not hurting me. It, it, it's, it hurts that you're not willing to hear truth. No matter my character, you might not like me, you might not like a beard, you might not like how hairy I am. Pretty hairy. God made me that way, man. It's not evolution. Okay, I wasn't an ape. Anyway. The point is the truth will make us free. So forget about me. If this truth sift out how I'm saying it, what I'm, if you don't like it in my character, whatever, and just go, yeah, but it was true. Lord, help me get there with that. That's what you've got to be like. Don't worry about these mouthpieces. God used a donkey to preach to a prophet. Pfft, it's just another donkey right here, man. Don't worry. We're going to come and go. You're not going to remember me. But Jesus is king. Do it for him. Go, is there truth in what I'm hearing? And don't worry about me or anybody else or Pastor Mike, if some of you don't like us, whoever he brings as a guest to speak. Just hear where's the truth. I love this comment that someone said. He goes, eat the meat, spit out the bones. In other words, don't choke on what's not, you know, like the character or this or what he's wearing. Or, or he's wearing flip-flops in church. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pastor Mike knows me. He was wondering why I didn't even wear my shorts. But Jesus was going to come here with sandals. So you've got a problem with my flip-flops, you're going to have a problem with Jesus. With his sandals. Or with John the Baptist. If he came, you would have thrown him out. Because he's not wearing a suit. He's wearing camel hair. That was God's suit for him. <laughs> Think about that, huh? Be careful when you're looking in the flesh and that flesh stuffs you off from hearing the Spirit. Because I got so messed up by God when he brought people that I'm telling you you would not think twice about thinking oh this guy's a man of God from homeless people speaking into my life stinking speaking into my life that hit me and I went oh, God changed me it, it was so from God and I didn't go it can't be from God because he smells he's homeless what see we've got to be careful we do this maybe not homeless but the guy's got long hair the guy's got a tattoo 
hear God through the people. Don't be so prideful where you miss it. Continuing. Uh, Father, I haven't sinned against... Oh, so, he wants to repent, okay? Because from the beginning was because of... He can go eat now, and he'll be fine because he's his father. I will rise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. He thinks he shouldn't be called a son. And that's how we are sometimes. I, I sinned. What are we, I'm a sinner. No, 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 you're a son who sinned. Now you feel like you're not worthy to be called a son. That's what Satan wants you to think. Because if he can make you believe you're a sinner, you will function as a sinner. Always. All the time. You'll have no victory. And, uh, okay. But the father said to you, no, we went too far, right? You go back? Okay. So, I will rise and go to my... Okay. And I'm no longer... Okay. Verse, I don't know what that is. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, notice the father's heart. So notice everything. We're going to see the son's heart, how he's thinking, because that's what we kind of get like. And then you'll see the father, how our father is. I'm telling you, on the way, this guy was sincerely changing, repenting for real, not just because of his father's hand. He realized how good his father was to him. The love his father gave, not just to him, but to even the servants that he had. How he would feed him, because now why? He tasted of what it's like somewhere else. He tasted of the stuff that the world would give him. And now he goes, oh, but you don't have to, guys. I know sometimes because you haven't done it, it looks enticing and good. And Let me go try that. It's going to ruin you. It is. That's what he's got planned for you. Satan, I mean. That's what he's got planned for you. But God has other plans for you. Choose his. And he arose and came to his father. But when his father was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father... I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Next verse, next time, whatever. Have a and the father said, Absolutely, you sinned against me. You're going to be called my son. Turn around, turn around. That was a hard one. That's what we would do. Maybe not with the, but with the, you have to earn back the sonship. Because you lost it. You're a slur, ser servant now. You've got to serve, slave away, da -da -da, and maybe three months I will watch your probationary period. And I will see if you make it back to being a son. He didn't do that, did he? He's longing for his dad to punish him for what he did. To just be called a servant, a slave, whatever. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet because they had no shoes. Slaves and servants didn't have shoes. Gives him sands, gives him the ring which shows authority and the best robe immediately. Doesn't earn the robe, then two weeks later the ring, and then three weeks later the shoes. And look, sandals. I'm just being biblical, guys, with my flip flops. Just saying. You're not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And bring to the fatted calf. And so he says, And bring the fatted calf and here to kill it. And let us be merry or celebrate. For this my son was dead and alive again. What did you say there? For this my son was what? And what? And what? Again. Get that in your head. He's talking to Christians. Every theologian knows this. And he said that his son though was dead. But he's alive again. There's a teaching that keeps saying that once you're saved, you're always saved. You can't walk away from your salvation, and that's a lie. So many scriptures I can see there again for hours showing you in the New Testament, from Jesus to all the Bible, all the New Testament, showing that people can walk away. Not lose. You don't go, oh, I lost my keys, I lost my salvation. It's a silly word they use. But you can choose because you have free will to walk away from your Father's hand, from the Father's ways, from your Father's Desire. That's why it says no one can pluck you out of God's hand. Yes, but you can walk away from it. Very different. If you are His, there's nothing that He will allow. You're staying in me, you remain. That's why it says remain in me. If you remain in me, you will bear much fruit. If you remain in me, that means I cannot if I want to. In Romans, it says 
that these, tr these branches are grafted into the olive tree, which was Christ, and they were removed because of their unbelief that Christ was the Messiah. And then he says, but don't boast and think that you're somebody now that you've been grafted in, you wild branches, us, non-Jews, let's say, were put into this tree what Je called Jesus. It was because we believed, he says. But beware, because you're not holding the tree, the tree's holding you, lest you also be plucked off. Once I'm in, I can be plucked off. So much scriptures I can get. So he was dead at one stage, it says there. And he's alive again. When did he die? That's what the scriptures say. When he chose willingly and knowingly to walk away from his father's house and his father. Willingly and knowingly walked away from his father and he, was, he died at that point but still was a son. Still a Christian. He was a dead and he's alive again. He's back. He's repented. So, just wanted to show you that key in this passage. Let me continue. Bring out the... Uh, and we, when he says, let me, let's kill the fatted calf and celebrate. Let's do a suvla, a barbecue. I'm sure it was a suvla. I'm pretty sure it was. It was a Cypriot. No, I'm joking. The point was, he was going to... They're, they're killing the fatted calf. Do you know, it wasn't like us that we would go to wherever Melis or Lidl or grab some meat or grab a pig or whatever and we just go and cook it. They grow and they were watching this little thing grow and become fatter and fatter for a special occasion. They would kill it. And this was a big deal to kill this meat, to have this meat of this calf that they grew up and fed for a special, very special occasion. What was the special occasion? The sinner is coming back and you want to celebrate him? That was the problem with the other brother. And sometimes we can be like this against our brothers and sisters who are coming back. Be careful. The other lesson that he shows there. Don't be like the other brother. Be careful. If they're coming back, no matter what they did, don't sit there going... Phew, 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 phew. Anyway. Grab them if they came back. And show them the goodness of God which leads them to repentance. Amen. If they're coming back. We've we got to show them Christ, guys. That's who God has. He's chosen us. That we will shine Christ through us. He will shine Himself through us because we led Him. His character, His love, His ways. Not ours. Because we want to go, why? Why should He get a fatted calf? Why should He have a barbecue? We, we want Him to earn the robe. We want Him to earn the ring. Why, why, why? But God does it differently. It doesn't mean you don't tell someone He's wrong when He's not willing to repent. If he's walking away, you've got to tell him, listen man, the path you're going, you're going to end up going to hell, man. If you die in your sin and you don't come back to God, you're going to go to hell, man. I'm not saying this to condemn you, that's why I'm saying if you don't. But I'm telling you the truth, that's what the Bible tells us. Please, stop it. Stop eating the pig's food, stop going into this world stuff. I can tell you a story that's very dreadful. I can show you the article of my friend. She was found dead under the pergola. Because she ended up I can't say it because maybe his son will hear me. Her, you know, I love their son and I don't, want, I don't think they want to... I'm not mentioning names, but... Sin, guys. Some people get taken out quickly by the devil because once you're eating from his world, he can take you out before your time. Because God has a plan for you, but Satan also. When you're in God's hand, you can't die until God says so. When you start walking into Satan's hand, you can die prematurely. Before God's time. And bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us make celebrate for the, my son was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and he's found. And they began to be merry or celebrate. Now his older son, the other Christian, also a son, was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and because he has received him safe, and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. He's telling him, why, man? Your brother came back. You know, so your father's celebrating. And I understand now, as a father, I understand like, man, you know, my father, my son, if he walked away, how I would feel. A person said to me, you will never feel fully 
I don't think never God can do supernatural things, but you will never fully understand what a father would feel like until you become one. And you have your children. They're longing for you to see them do, be who all they could be. And when they're going the wrong way, how long you, you know, all, it's different. It's another level. Now, I knew a level, I knew a level before having my child. But when you have one, it's like, oh, I didn't know the level. Okay, there's another level. Okay, so it's amazing how God does it because He loves family. He caused family to be here so we can understand Him as a father and everything as well in another level in every area, you know? Anyway, um, but he was angry, so the brother was angry at hearing that his brother came back and there's a party going on for him. But he was angry and would not go in, therefore his father came out. Listen to the father's heart. Even this stupid attitude from this Christian boy, the father, God still comes and goes, Hey, hey, what's going on? He didn't come, Hey, psh, come here, get in there. He didn't do that. Did you notice the difference? He still comes undeservedly because he's got an attitude problem. This other son has an attitude problem. Instead of coming to him harsh, God does come harsh as well. It just depends where you're at in your sin. I'll show you the last scripture that I'm going to say later. Um, but he comes up to him and says, Hey, and starts having a conversation with him. Give him understanding. How beautiful, how merciful, how gentle is our God. See the character that comes out showing how our God is in these passages. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him, like he deserves to be pleaded with. Yet, our father is like that, not like us. And we've got to be more like him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, or look, those many years I have been serving you, I never transgressed your commandment. This is the... Okay, I'll finish first. These many years I have been serving you, I never transgressed your commandment, listen to this guy, at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I may make subla with my friends. It's the, it was mistranslated. It has to be subla there. <laughs> subla with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, prostitutes, um, uh, where am I? Harlots, you killed the fatter calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead, here he goes again, and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Was that the last one? Yeah. What's the point? The point is the second son is be, be careful again of being harsh with your other brothers and sisters when they're coming back, but be the ones who hug them and love them into feeling like they didn't have to earn something now that they're back, but they're so loved and they're, they're going... How can you love me after me walking away from you guys? I was speaking bad about your church and you guys, blah, blah, blah. But I want to come back now. I, pff, come here, man. Love keeps no record of being wronged. That's the scripture. Love keeps no record of being wronged. And what's the other thing? The other son was a good boy. He did everything the father said. Went to church on Sunday. Bible study, served that church, served on the field, maybe when evangelism, read his Bible, prayed, did everything. He says it. That he always obeyed him, always did everything he asked. And he said to him, listen to the words, Son, all that I had was always yours to do with as you wanted. He didn't know his father in that angle. He didn't know his father fully. He only knew him. This is what I need to be doing, so that's what I do for my father that will please him. He didn't realize, everything I have is yours, man. We can miss, see, and know our father. We can see him in one specific angle. And then we treat everyone from the way we think God is, because that's the way we see him, but we don't see who he fully is. We need to fully see him. And you only fully see him when you spend time with him. When you read his word... Don't deny the, se the, the sections of him where he's severe, where he sounds harsh. And only take where he's like lamb and sounds cute and merciful and loving. But take him where he says also the harsh stuff. You get to know him fully and go, God, I re that fears me what I read there. And that's still you. Jesus even said it. Help me know you this way as well and love you this way as well. I want to love you 
not a version of you, or not me making an image or likeness of you, and what I don't like in the Bible, eh, that's not you. Because we're going to go to the next, next passage. That I, so Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 to 35, and we finish. Because you need to know this. In the Bible it says this. Behold the goodness and severity of God. Say this. Say goodness. goodness. Say severity. Goodness. Did you see the two sides of him? He says he was full of grace and truth. Because truth sometimes doesn't sound very gracious. But the truth will make you free. Behold, Jesus is the Lamb and what? The Lion. And the problem has been, many of us have learned that He's just the Lamb. And we don't like when the Lion Scriptures come out. We have to under confront those Scriptures that, ooh, the ones that says things like, to the church of Laodicea in Revelations. To the church. Who? Church. Us. Christians. Of Laodicea. I wish that you are hot or cold. But because you're neither hot or cold. You're not hot for me. And you're not just live your own life man. Stop acting. But because you're in the middle. You're lukewarm. I will spew you out of my mouth. That doesn't sound very loving. That doesn't sound very merciful. Does it? No honestly. Don't try to pamper it. Don't try to go, well, spewing there means in the Greek, emeto. <laughs> and emeto in the Latin, Hebrew, it means spewing, vomiting. It's not a good thing. I'm going, I don't want to go. It doesn't feel good. So let's really call it for what it is. Be real. Wow, it's in there. That's harsh. That's full on. God, I'm not changing your word. Help me love you through that help me see it from your angle and if i never see it and understand why you speak so strong and harsh in some areas i don't want to judge you who am i to judge you you are righteous you are the one who sees things as they really are so if that's what you will do i will see it one day when i'm there with you and go ah but if i don't understand until i get there still you are lord and king i will not judge you and we do that we judge god and his scriptures and try to pamper them and make them fit our humanity our fluffiness. You know, it's not politically correct. We've been like this so much that these kids now are growing up thinking they were born in donkey's bodies. Wait, a donkey in a human body. I'm a woman in a man's body, a man in a woman's body. No, you're delusional and you need help. You're delusional and you need help. This is not a put down. They are actually delusional. And being help, need help. Jesus always set us straight. He said this, how you being evil... If you know how to do good things, what did he just say to them? How you, being evil, he says to them, these followers, they're around him. Multitudes, they want to follow him now. They want to follow Christ. And he says, you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. He called them evil. Now this generation, if Jesus came and spoke like that, oh, I'm offended. Everyone will block him from Facebook. Wouldn't he? Think about it. If you just read some of the scriptures that he says, because you need to get to know the Jesus that stood in front of a prostitute and stopped them from you know, stoning her to death because they should have. She was caught in the act. That was the law. He's there to take the stones and speak to them. Who has ever never sinned before you throw your first stone? What great love to a guilty person stopping them from stoning her. Mercy, love, grace, everything you can think of. But you also got to know the Jesus that when... And started flipping the tables of the people that were just trying to make some money for their families. He's the same one that went in and started flipping tables. He's the same one that said, you whitewashed tombs, you're full of dead men bones, you're full of serpents, you are serpents. He's the same one that called one of the guys, you're a devil, he said to him. This is Jesus. And if you don't know him like that, you don't know the warrior side of who he is. And that means you won't know the warrior side of who you are. Because you would be made in His image, His likeness. You would just be a lamb. So when something happens, and a wolf comes, or a bear comes, or a lion comes, like David, instead of coming and smacking the bear, and cutting the head of Goliath, you'd be like, Ah! I'm a lamb! Bear! 
problems, problems, problems coming in the world. Ah, oh, break that, pray for me, pray for me. You be the warrior, man. You know that God is a man of war, it says in the book of Psalms. Warrior, powerful, almighty. He made you in his image, his likeness. Imagine when things are falling apart in the world, then they're going to continue and they're going to get worse very soon again. They need, God's looking for some warriors to rise up. To take the hand of those who are going, You're going, hey, come here, come here, bear. Come here, come here. Come here, it's okay. And then strengthen them. Hey, you're a warrior. Jesus is king. If he's for us, who cares who's against us? Come on, brother. Come on, sister. Come on, unbeliever. Come here, become a believer. Now, come on, brother. Come on, sister. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. This is what we're meant to do. Because we've become powerful in Christ. We're walking and functioning knowing who He is. When I used to act like a tough guy, oh, mate, did I act even more like a tough guy? When we were about to fight other people, if I knew one or two of the other guys that know really how to fight really good were with us, oh, I was more, we had one guy that was like this, mate, he was like the you know, weakest guy. We can slap him around. Everyone can slap him around. But when he knew I was there, the other guys were there that were tough and the other guys wanted to start us, he had the biggest mouth. He would come back, yeah! What? You know, and he start, and like, I'll take everybody. I can beat everybody up. He can't beat anybody up. He was confident because of who was with him, who was for him. This is who you are. doesn't matter if you think you're weak and little and skinny or this or that, you can't fight. It doesn't matter. We're not trying to fight flesh. Our fight is not against flesh and blood, against principalities. There is a fight against principalities, powers, and all the works of the devil, all of them. And he's working hard. That's why this delusion is hitting the kids. They're trying to put puberty stoppers on the kids. Delusions. And hurt the kids. Even here, they're passing laws. We need people that are warriors. I'll finish the verse because I don't go in past the time, I think. Usually. <laughs> Uh, then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall I, my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Seven times? So he had a limit. Seven times, yeah? Like seven, eight, six? What do you think? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Therefore the kingdom, listen to this. Who's speaking right now? Jesus. Now let's hear the severity, Jesus. Not just the prodigal son love Jesus, but also love Jesus for severity. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Therefore, listen to this, the kingdom of heaven. What is he going to talk about? The kingdom of heaven, what it's like. Wow. To Christians again. He's telling you, this is how the government of heaven functions. This is how we function. I said, uh, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who went and to settle accounts with his servants. Are we his servants? Yes. We are also called servants in the Bible. The children of God are children of God and servants of God. We serve people, we serve God, and we're also kings. We rule over the demonic in the name of Jesus. I do not say to you, seven, uh, therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he went, had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Or think of 10,000 euro, okay? Uh, where am I? Yeah. But as he was not able to pay his master, commanded that he, will, he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. Next. Who's saying this? Say, Jesus. Who's Christian here? Say, my Jesus. Good stuff. Then Peter came to him and... Uh, where am I? And, uh, so, there, so he was... And when he had begun to settle account, one, but as he was not able to pay, his master commanded him to be sold. Okay, next one, sorry. Right. Sorry, yeah. I'm going fast, as usual. Yeah, I know. I've been moving a lot lately, so we're living in a caravan right now. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's serious, but it's been cool. Then Peter came to him, okay, no, wait. Hey, hey Mango Sendo, Windows 10. <laughs> uh, 
it's okay to slow me down so you can kind of you know, take in what I already once said. It's like, whoa, it's good. Should I just get it? Ah, oh, oh, what just happened there? Okay, but as he was not able to pay his master, the, the servant therefore fell down before him. This is us when we were also out in the world, we came to Jesus. Fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me, I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him and forgave him all the debt. We owed God for the things we've done in thought, in action. Not compared to anybody else, but we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And we said, sorry, Lord. He forgave us all our debts. Yeah? Now, him as a Christian went up to the, to the master. He forgave him all his debt. And listen, and be, be careful not to be this kind of Christian. And he, uh, but the servant, that servant went out, the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. hundred euro, let's say. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me all that you owe. So his fellow servant, fellow Christian, fell at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw, so his fellow servants, the other Christians, saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, you wicked Christian, I forgave you all the debt because you begged me. Next. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master, where am I? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Who said that? my Jesus you see that so I wanted you to hear the lion and the lamb today his goodness and severity his grace and the truth because we need to grow in Christ in all things and who he is okay let's stand up as I pray for you in close I want to ask you in your heart I don't, I don't have to lead you to this but if you have been trying to eat the pig's food or been tempted by the devil to come his way or been double-minded with God lukewarm just in your heart say Lord if you're honestly willing he knows he hears the hearts not the lips they worship me with their lips but their hearts are far from me he wants the heart say to him my heart is back yours it's, I give it back to you Lord forgive me tell him guys tell him in your heart you cl let's all close your eyes so you don't look at me. I'm not here to tell you, put your hand up so I can see this and I can see that. You, God loves you. He knows every single one of you. He makes sure you're born at this time. He has an amazing destiny for you if you will have it. If you will have it. If you will take it. If you will take His plans for you, not the devil's. And it's up to you to say, I'm sorry God, I'm, I'm going after you again. Here's my heart again in your hand. And we give you that. And then you take steps when you get out of here to make time for Him every day. Reading His Word, spending time with Him. Give Him time and He will transform you. He will grow you. He will strengthen you to see that temptation as it is. And you're going to not be lured as easy anymore to it. Because you're growing in Him so much, you start seeing the stain of sin more. And you don't like it because you see it for what it is. When you don't spend time with Him, the sin looks good. If you have not a Christian, if you have never said yes to Jesus officially, I want you to say to Jesus right now, Lord, I want you to be my Lord. I ask you to forgive me for the sins and the wrongs I've done. And I choose to forgive those who have sinned against me right now. And I accept you as my savior take my life 
and do whatever you want with it. I'm yours today. In Jesus' name. Just one last thing. Sorry, Pastor Mike. If you have not forgiven a brother or a sister that when I started saying about forgiveness and read that scripture, this is so powerful, God, because it says in the guys, because in the Bible it also says he, when you if you don't forgive your brother in another passage in Matthew, he says your heavenly Father will also not forgive you when you go up to heaven with his angels. He says again that he will not do it. So please forgive them, and it's not because it's okay what they did to you guys, it's, and it's not because they deserve to be forgiven. It's because God deserves that you would obey Him. And you're forgiving them for God's sake, not because they deserve it. You understand? Release them, let God do deal with it. Yeah? Because when you don't forgive, you're the one drinking the poison. It's damaging you. It's making you bitter against other people around you that love you, and you're treating them bad because you're bitter inside because you won't release that person that you feel unforgiveness for. Forgive them today, okay? All right, God bless you. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Thank you, Vasanath.